Hello everyone and welcome to Body Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Horror Heaven 77. And uh, yeah, this week we're doing movies from the year of my birth, 1977. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, you think about it is when people, you know, talk about, oh my God, you really love movies, don't you? And all this stuff. It's like when you look back and you think the string of movies that came out in 1977, yeah, it would make sense that I would end up becoming a movie lover, at least in my humble opinion because i mean you look back i mean think of 1977 okay that's one star wars close encounters of the third kind um uh smoky and the bandit you know we had like uh let's see west craven put out the original hills have eyes you know cronenberg put out uh rabid you know um john landis got together with the zucker brothers and made you know kentucky fried movie and on and on and on Jim Henson gave us uh, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas and, you know, just so on. You know what I mean? So, yeah, so um, it makes sense. You know, it totally makes sense that I would end up becoming a movie lover because if anything good came out of 1977, it was definitely it was definitely a lot of great movies. That being said, though, um, 1977 was the year the book The Shining was published. Probably one of the reasons why I have such a love affair with The Shining as well. But anyway, enough of that. You guys already know by the title of the video, the movie that I'm talking about from 1977 is George A. Romero's Martin. And um, just recently we heard we heard rumor that this movie is going to be getting a, uh, supposedly it was supposed to be starting out as just a Blu-ray release, but now they're talking even a 4K release, and that's rumored to be coming out next year. If that comes out, oh boy, you better believe I'm going to snag that sucker. I am going to get my hands on it. Oh yeah. Because I love this movie, Martin. It's I th I find it kind of interesting because it's absolutely like right up there with Salem's Lot, you know, Toby Hooper's Salem's Lot. It's right up there as one of my all-time favorite vampire movies ever. And the funny thing is, is the character is actually not a real vampire. <clears throat> the story begins. We have a uh, young man, Martin, played amazingly brilliantly by John Amplis and you know John Amplis also you know you remember he played Nate uh, the corpse Nate in Creepshow he played you know uh, Fisher in Day of the Dead and so on he's done a lot of stuff with uh, George Romero over the years <clears throat> he played uh, I believe the character's name was Abraham in uh, in uh, John Russo's Midnight and on and on and on so yeah so John uh, so John Amplis yeah a wonderful actor, and uh, if you can, follow him on social media. He's really nice, and he'll talk to you. So, But anyway, uh, we have our main character, Martin, John Amplis. He's boarding a train. Um, he's heading towards Braddock, Pennsylvania, where he's going to stay with his cousins. And he's he sees this beautiful woman, you know, and he's he starts kind of going into stalking mode. And, you know, he's like looking. He finds out what her... her you know, on the train, he finds out what her kind of like her cabin number is, I guess, you know. And so he's just kind of hanging out, you know, playing with cards, things like this. He's also kind of into magic tricks, and, and he kind of gets into that, uh, explaining about how there really is no magic and things like this. And so, you know, he, he gets up, you know, and, you know, we find out immediately that uh, he's actually a murderer. And he's not, he's not your traditional um, you know, Christopher Lee, Bella Lugosi type vampire. He's, <clears throat> sorry. Um, he goes, you know, he goes into the uh, toilet and we find out that he's, you know, he's carrying a backpack, which he always carries with him. And in his backpack, he has, basically he has a murder kit. You know, he has like this, uh, you know, he has this kind of like thing that he unrolls and, you know, he has uh, syringes and, and needles and, um, syringes and needles. Boom. And, you know, he has basically like sedatives and what he does is he hunts and stalks his potential victims. And then he uh, he basically he injects them with the needles so he can sedate them to where they won't fight back. And then he usually he'll take like a razor blade and, uh, you know, he'll cut their wrists or <clears throat> sorry, I'm very sorry. My throat's dry. He'll cut their wrists or whatever. And then uh, he'll drink their blood because in his mind. He is a vampire, and he needs blood to survive. He cannot, in his, it, um, it's very similar. Um, some people say that the movie Martin was inspired by the murderer Richard Chase, 
who murdered people and drank their blood because he felt because he believed that he had a um, like a blood deficiency and he felt that he needed to drink blood in order to stay alive to maintain himself and Martin kind of operates on the same level but I can't really confirm or deny whether you know Romero was actually inspired by Richard Chase I think that actually happened later after the movie Martin came out I don't know I, I can't tell but anyway so uh, you know so he breaks into the the woman's room that he was checking out earlier and then you know he and one thing we find out about Martin is that he has a very vivid imagination but the thing is it's kind of interesting is because um, you kind of wonder like it, it kind of because you have these segments that go in black and white where, where um, he's, you know, going after a victim. And it's very much, uh, it's shot in black and white and it's very reminiscent of a, like a gothic, old-fashioned, kind of almost universal vampire movie sort of. <clears throat> and um, interesting note was that uh, apparently at one point, um, Romero even talked about he wanted to shoot the whole movie in black and white, but that wasn't going to fly. But you come to find out, though, like his fantasies don't exactly pan out like in one inst like in this instance, you know, he, he feels like he's going to bust into the room and the woman is going to be sexy and wearing lingerie and she's going to welcome him with open arms. And he busts in, he finds out she's actually in the bathroom. And then when she comes out, you know, she's you know got her hair up and like curlers and things and she's got, you know, like, you know, the stuff on her face, you know, and everything else. But he ends up attacking her, and he injects her, and he just waits for her to go to sleep. She eventually finally does. And then he does kind of a sexual assault on them. Um, it's, it's kind of hard. You know, it's like, um, would you actually call Martin a rapist? And that's actually an interesting question. But, but anyway, he, he starts fondling her, and I guess he has a form of sex with her. Um, Romero doesn't get too into that, but... But then he takes the um, he takes the razor blade and he just you know takes her arm and just you know and just blood goes everywhere, and of course you know it's we got you know effects by the great Tom Savini so that helps. And a very funny story is if you watch I'm sure you already know this if you watch Scream Grades or you watched you know documentaries on Ramiro and and um, <clears throat> Savini. Savini came up with the idea of, hey, you know, here's what I'll do. I'll take a razor blade and I'll just file it down to where it's not sharp. You don't have to worry about cutting, you know, file off the edges and the tips and things. And then, you know, he'll take an ear syringe, fill it up with fake blood and just, you know, have the, the bulb in his hand. Just like as he's running the blade down, you know, he just squeezes the bulb and the fake blood comes out. Of course, you know, um, Savini said, you know, at the time he was using, I think it was that 3M blood. And uh, he wasn't very happy with it because... You know, it's uh, it looked you know to him, it, you know, it, to quote him, it looked like melted crayons. So, but anyway, he he you know, you know, he cuts her wrist, he drinks her blood, <clears throat> and the poor girl dies. And then he goes through the process of cleaning everything up and, and trying to make the whole thing look like a suicide, and that she killed herself, and all this kind of. Stuff. And then he goes back and he just sits down. And he starts reading a book. Well, the next day he goes, you know, he arrives in Braddock and then, you know, he's met by his, uh, he's met by his cousin Tatakuda. And uh, we, we come to find out this entire family is really bonkers. And so it's like you come to realize it's not, you know, it's not hard to see where Martin comes from because, you know, the, the whole family, well, except for his, um, except for his cousin Christine, who's played by Christine, you know, Forrest, you know, at the time and. She eventually married George Romero later on, but uh, at the time they were just dating. But, uh, you know, he meets Tatakuda and, and, you know, they have this very awkward and comfortable ride on the train back to his house. And like, no, not even a second after Martin walks in the door, first thing Tatakuda said, Nosferatu, you know, and he's all like talking about, you will not take people from the town. And if I hear of it a single time, I will kill you without salvation and things like, you know, I mean, he's, Tatakuda is kind of insane. I mean, this guy honestly really sees himself as a, uh, he really sees himself as a Van Helsing, and he really sees himself as like somebody who's got to save the world. And <clears throat> and so it's like, Martin is completely brainwashed into thinking that he's Dracula, that he is a vampire, much the same way that Tatakuda is brainwashed into thinking that he is 
you know, Van Helsing. And then, you know, you get kind of like the one sane member of the family, which is Christine, played by Christine Forrest. And she's trying to just talk to him and she's trying to, you know, and, you know, she's, you know, she's really in a bad position because she is stuck in this crazy family. And as much as she cares about Martin and she wants to, you know, she wants to, um, you know, she wants to help him and she wants him to get away from this insanity and stuff. And event, you know, and she just wants to get out of it, too. And she just wants to live a normal life. And, you know, she has a boyfriend, Arthur, played by Tom Savini, um, you know, without the mustache and stuff. But, uh, but it turns out like her relationship with him is no good because he's always out messing around. Um, she's, you know, she suspects him of out running around with other women, things like this. And, and you know, he's just kind of like a a real, you know, his character is kind of a really blue collar guy. He just goes out and just, you know, he works, you know, you know, Braddock, you know, they have like mine, coal mines, things like that, whatever they have there. And then, you know, like he goes out and drinks and plays pool, chases girls, things like this and everything else. So he's not really kind of the settled down type. So Martin, you know, he's, uh, Tatakuda makes him work in his grocery store. He runs kind of like a little supermarket. And so he makes, Martin work in the store like stocking shelves. He also sends about on deliveries and things like this. And so, you know, at one point, Martin comes across this woman, Abby, and, uh, you know, she, you know, he's looking at her because the first time he sees her, you know, she's walking around. She's got like a top on and stuff, but she's kind of got like her underwear and stockings on. And, and she goes to put on a skirt. And so he's, yeah, he's liking what he sees. And, and she immediately takes to him too. And so she offers to give him a ride. And so, you know, they're, you know, she just talks and talks and talks and everything. And, you know, she's worried that, you know, he's going to hate her because, you know, she talks too much and all this. But it turns out, you know, they do like each other. And she, you know, asks him, you know, do you do like odd jobs, you know, yard work, candy work and all this? And Martin's like, yeah. And she's like, well, we'll work something out. You know? so, and so he starts spending time with her, which ultimately leads to the two of them having an affair. She's very much, Abby is very much in the same boat that uh, Christine is in because, um, you know, she's married to a man who's, you know, uh, you know, out chasing around, chasing girls, all this kind of stuff, never home, all this, you know, kind of like very old fashioned. Uh, he's the breadwinner. He, you know, she's the housewife. He's the breadwinner. You know, he goes out, he earns a living. You know, she runs the errands. She, you know. Uh, keeps the car full of gas, all this kind of stuff. And so, you know, she wants to break out. So the two of them get into this relationship. And then meanwhile, Martin is continuing his thing of, um, you know, stalking victims. And, uh, you know, and like I said, you know, he's always got these fantasies built up in his head of what is supposed to, how the whole thing is supposed to go. But it never turns out the way that, you know, he thinks it's going to go. Like, for instance, he's stalking this one woman and he waits for her husband to leave and he decides that's the time to attack. So when he goes into it, he goes in to, you know, attack this woman and kill her and drink her blood. Turns out actually she's got a boyfriend in there with her. So he's got to deal with that. So, but, um, yeah, as the story goes on, um, you know, so, and then another thing too, is that Martin, um, he, you know, at one point, um, in, early in the movie, Christina, she talks about how she wants to have a phone and, you know, like, you know, she's like, oh, my God, this family's in such in the dark ages and stuff. She's like, I want to have a phone. And she's like, do you want to have a phone? And eventually he decides that he does. And he's listening to a radio show, kind of just a trash radio show, which he decides he's going to start calling in and he's going to start, um, you know, he's going to start explaining to this guy about, like, you know, who he is, what what's going on. And, stuff. and the funny thing is, is like he's Martin is talking about this and he is confessing to his crimes talking but apparently they don't take him seriously because you would think it's like okay we need to see if we can trace where these calls are coming from and we need to send send somebody after this guy <clears throat> sorry like even if this guy's not crazy he's definitely unbalanced and we need to see if this guy needs like you know psychiatric help or something you'd think that's what would happen but it turns out the radio show they consider it such a great gimmick that they just keep asking him to keep calling back and and uh, Martin just goes on and on talking about how there is no magic and, you know, that uh, you can't make, you know, the movies aren't real, which, I mean, we all know that, but, you know, the movies are not real and, you know, you can't make people do what you want them to do. You can't force people to go the way you want them to. And, um, 
you know, and he's talking about his methods of how he goes about stalking and killing his victims and things like this. And, uh, yeah, uh, let's see. I don't want to get into too much more. I think I've gotten into plenty enough already. But ultimately, you know, things do come to a head. There's an ultimate showdown between Tatakuda and Martin, and I'll leave it at that. But um, anyway, this movie is fantastic. And um, it's so wonderfully made. If this movie does get, you know, John Amplis' performance is astounding. And I can't recommend it enough. If you guys can find the movie, definitely find it. Even if it's just DVD or VHS or whatever, you know. Yeah, if you can get this movie, get it and watch it. It is so good. John Amplis is just amazing. Romero's script is so awesome. Romero also makes a cameo in the movie playing a priest. But, um, yeah, I just, I can't recommend this movie enough. It's so well made. It's, you know, it's got some moments of great kind of humor. Um, it's not the most scary movie in the world. And even though it is, you know, it has some gore. It has some blood and gore and stuff. And it, it's not the goriest thing that Savini's ever done, you know. But um, still, I can't recommend it enough. And also, too, it's really good to have a movie like this when you get tired of the the same old kind of vampire movies, you know, with the with the medieval castles and, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And you want something a little bit a little bit more modern and a little bit more. Um, um, I do believe if I remember correctly, I do believe like when Romero was originally writing the story, he was actually thinking about just doing it as kind of like an old fashioned kind of gothic. But obviously they weren't going to have the budget for that. So he changed it around, made it more modern and, and decided to, you know, Decide to make it out that Martin isn't exact. He's not a real vampire, but he's he's a psychopath who thinks that he is a vampire. And I thought that's you know it's very nice. It's a very refreshing change of pace, and and I definitely recommend. I definitely recommend this movie. Um, it's got everything. If you love you know classic Romero, and you you know you you want to watch, I definitely recommend. Yes, please watch Martin. It is such a great movie. It's so good, and. I think that's enough. I think I've said the movie's good plenty enough times, so that's going to wrap it up. And really, oh God, I really do pray that we do get that 4K out next year, because I definitely want to buy that. If we get it, I'm snagging it. Anyway, that's going to do it. So uh, if anybody took the time to watch this, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. I also hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a like. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the Body Bags channel. We have a different... Uh, reviewer one for every day of the week i'm the friday reviewer different guys everybody's doing great stuff and uh yeah we got fun theme weeks coming up and everything else so um stick around and everybody take care have a good night and uh, i'll see you later